Why does a product fail? Sometimes it's because it's genuinely a bad product. But other times it's because the product is so ahead of its time, the market might not have been ready for it just yet. Well, among a couple of other things in this case. This is the story of the Nokia N-Gage. And with me today is Nokia's final take on the series, the N-Gage QD. And let's start with the hardware first. And how about we do a live unboxing and hardware tour? I bought it off eBay and this is how the box looks like. The N-Gage lineup was supposed to be a handheld gaming console and a phone built into one. Now today there are plenty of gaming phones, but back in 2003-2004, this was unheard of. And as a result, the hardware of the N-Gage QD proudly shows off its gaming capabilities. This thing is so quirky, honestly, it's just... just incredibly cool. You might also notice that the form factor eerily resembles one of its main competitors at the time, the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. The device was named the Taco Phone for a reason. On the front, you have a 2.1 inch TFT display with a 176 by 208 pixels resolution. The tall aspect ratio was very unconventional for a gaming device. The device was completely made out of plastic, which was the case with most of the devices from that era, but this one is surrounded by a rubber band that goes all the way around the device. And I'm guessing this was done to improve the durability. What's really strange though is that all of the ports are covered by this rubber band, so you need to remove the flaps in order to access any of the ports. Even the power button, which is located on the right, has been integrated onto this rubber band. On the top you have a headphone jack and Nokia's weird circular charging port. And on the bottom you have the hot swappable MMC slot. So this is where you can insert and remove your gaming cartridges. There's also a bottom firing single speaker. On the right of the display you have your traditional T9 keypad, with number 5 and number 7 being slightly more emphasized and I'm guessing these are the gaming controls. While on the left of the display there is the 4-way D-pad with an OK button that's slightly under it. The speaker is on the right of the T9 keypad so you don't have to hold the phone in a weird way in order to make phone calls. On the back there is the removable backplate which you can easily access by pressing on this large button and sliding up. And this phone is using the really old mini SIM standard. Unfortunately, you won't be able to access the operating system without inserting a SIM card. And of course, because it's a gaming device, it required very powerful hardware. So luckily, it's powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 clocked at 5 GHz with 24 GB of RAM. No, it's not. It's powered by a single core ARM 920T processor that's clocked at 104 megahertz. Yep, single core. And I can't find accurate info about how much RAM it has, but it does have about 11 megabytes of internal storage. So yeah. And here's that beautiful 1070 milliamps battery. I also found an old and non-functional SIM card lying around somewhere here. So using this cheap adapter that I bought off Amazon, I can insert this into the phone and power it on. And we're ready to go, power button. The operating system on this phone is Symbian 6.1 Series 60 version 1. This was obviously during the good old days of Symbian and the operating system was actually considered quite powerful for what it was. You can see there are plenty of utility apps that were built into the operating system. And the N-Gage QD had its own N-Gage-esque theme to it with orange and greys all around. The menu itself is pretty simple. So you had Engage Arena, which allowed you to play against other people online, which when you think about it is a feature that's way ahead of its time. We're talking online gaming in 2003, 2004. The OS also supported local multiplayer using Bluetooth, which was another very unique and futuristic feature for such a device. And best of all, even support for third-party apps, although there isn't an official app store for it. Just playing around briefly with this shows you how feature-rich Symbian was for its time. Listen to the sound of scrolling between menus. Listen to those buttons. 
The buttons themselves have very good tactile feedback, although long gaming sessions did prove to be a bit tiring for my thumbs, which is something I don't remember experiencing on the Game Boys that I used to own. Putting the hardware aside, I did end up buying four different games to fully live the Engage gaming experience. These games are Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Sonic N, FIFA 2005 and Crash Nitro Kart. An interesting thing is that some of these were actually brand new. And their case reminds me of the good old days when brands used to put a lot of things inside. So there's a booklet, info about how to play the game on the N-Gage, as well as the cartridge itself. Some of them even came with this, so you can store additional gaming cartridges and take them with you on the go. And this is how the gaming cartridge looks like. Of course, the games are on an MMC card, which is what this is. So why did the N-Gage lineup fail? For a start, it was way too expensive compared to its main competitor, the Game Boy. And we're not talking about a couple of dollars here. The original N-Gage retailed for around $300 versus around $100 for Nintendo's Game Boy. That's three times more expensive for a gaming experience that just isn't as good. And yes, the N-Gage QD was a bit cheaper at around $250, but that was still way more expensive than the Game Boy still. Number two was that gaming wasn't as mainstream or as widely accepted as it is today, at least on phones. Smart, expensive phones was not something that the vast majority of young people or teenagers owned back then. They were considered more of a luxury, especially something as expensive as the N-Gage. And the Nokia N-Gage's hardware was too compromised as a phone and too compromised as a handheld gaming console. I believe Nokia failed to find the right balance between the two. The Game Boy, for example, had a larger display with a better aspect ratio for gaming and much more comfortable gaming controls while any other Nokia smartphone was a lot more convenient to use as a phone for calling and texting. And finally, the original Engage had some really strange hardware decisions. For some reason, the gaming cartridge slot was located under the backplate. So every time you needed to swap between games, you had to remove the backplate and then the battery. Talk about an oversight. And the speaker required to hear phone calls was located on the side of the device, which led to holding the phone in a hilarious way to make phone calls. And if I had to guess, I'd say that Nokia was probably selling them either at cost or for a slight loss, hoping to make their money back by selling games. Unfortunately, the end result was that Nokia failed to sell as many games as they'd hoped they would, and they only managed to sell about 3 million devices compared to multiple more millions that Nintendo managed to sell of their Game Boy lineup. So the whole project was deemed an expensive failure and a very harsh lesson for Nokia to learn. The gaming concept ended up moving from dedicated hardware to a software feature that was available on their N series of devices. So I guess it wasn't a total loss. In summary, the N-Gage was neither a fantastic phone or an excellent handheld gaming console. But the idea, the concept behind it was brilliant and so ahead of its time. And perhaps if the idea was released a couple of years later when technology had finally caught up to the concept, it might have actually succeeded. And this is why it remains an iconic device in the brand's history. And unfortunately, the last time Nokia ever tried to make a gaming phone. If you enjoyed this nostalgia trip, check out my Lumia 720 video, one of the most stylish mid-rangers Nokia ever released. Or if you're into quirky form factors, check out my Nokia N93i video. What a device. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you in the next one.